Papa Jeff's America program is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. Thank you. If you'd like to buy Papa Jeff a cup of coffee, visit us on the web at coffee.papajeffusa.com because you know how much Papa Jeff loves his coffee. Papa Jeff's America, the talk radio podcast, continuing the conversation one podcast at a time. Radio time from Houston, Texas, broadcasting around the country and around the world. Welcome to the Papa Jeff's America program. We're the talk radio podcast that discusses the stuff and things that you want to talk about. The talk radio podcast continuing the conversation one podcast at a time. Inspiring guests, insightful commentary, and what would a day be without Papa Jeff's classic old guy humor, right? So here's the guy that has trouble seeing the big E on the eye chart. The guy that some would say has a unique sense of humor, and the guy that definitely has a face for radio. Here's Mr. Here We Go himself, PG the OG, Papa Jeff. Welcome to Papa Jeff's America. The Talk Radio Podcast, continuing the conversation one podcast at a time. I'm Papa Jeff, and this is Papa Jeff's America. Did you know that any time is train time? You know, just like most folks, you probably don't ever give it a second thought. Nonetheless, the statement is true. And believe me when I tell you, people do some really stupid things at railroad crossings. Oh, look, the lights are flashing red. I'm late. I've still got time to get across. But do you? Those lights are warning you that a train is approaching, and that train can't stop. It will hit anything that is on that crossing. Anything that is in its way. Here's an example. A vehicle and a train get to the crossing at the same time. It's a tie, right? Yeah, but the train always wins. Are you walking near the train tracks? Maybe we're sleeping near the tracks? Hey, you're not supposed to be there, but even more serious, you're not safe. So today, Jessica Dvorsky from Operation Lifesaver is with us, and we're going to talk about rail safety. Together, we can save lives at railroad crossings and on train tracks. It's great information, and we all need to hear it because we're all in this together. The Papa Jeff's America program, we are the talk radio podcast, continuing the conversation one podcast at a time. It's 73 degrees and mostly cloudy at the Taco G Studios in H-Town, Space City, Houston, Texas. We are the city with no limits. We are Houston Strong. Coming up for us after the break, always expect a train. Jessica Dvorsky, Operation Lifesaver, next. The Papa Jeff's America program is on the air. Anytime, any device, papajeffusa.com. Did you know, and you should know, because if you didn't know that anytime is train time, because once that train is built, it rolls, and it's going to go wherever the rails tell it to go. Guys, you need to know that together we can save lives at railroad crossings and on train tracks. I didn't make that up. I stole that from the Operation Lifesaver website. Operation Lifesaver is a nonprofit organization that works together with railroads to protect us as the motoring public and the railroads and everybody. And today, our special guest 
is Jessica Dvorsky, and she works with Operation Lifesaver in rail safety education. You can find them online at oli.org, and she has graciously volunteered some of her valuable time today to come on today and talk to us here in Papa Jeff's America about Operation Lifesaver, about trains, about You know, I I explained to her, you know, kind of my thing. I can just imagine the look on her face when she got my email when I reached out and said, hey, would you like to come on Papa Jeff's America? And she's thinking, who is this old guy that wants me to come on here and talk about this? But you guys know that I was in school bus for a lot of years and in ambulance for a lot of years and have had contact with the railroads. And we've even had our friend Matt Parker, who is with the railroad in Reno, come on several different times. So I'm a railroad guy. And Jessica is going to talk to us today about Operation Lifesaver because people get around trains and they get stupid. I said that. She didn't say that. And they do. Everybody loves trains and they lose their, they get a false sense of security, I think, when they get around them because they're big and they're fast and they're heavy and they don't stop on a dime and pick it up. They really really don't. So Jessica, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for taking your time. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. She is a, Jessica is a podcast junkie. I will tell you, I'll just, I'll give her, give out her little secret. Just, just like my wife, Monica is a podcast junkie. I didn't even know what a podcast was until Monica educated me and now I know, and now I'm on it. And so Jessica is, is good with podcasts too. So, um, Jessica, the the Texas office uh, of Operation Lifesaver is in Waco, right? And um, what's going on with Operation Lifesaver in Texas? I, you know, as I told you, I'm fairly new to Texas. I was born and raised in Southern California, and then uh, got to Texas via 15 year stop in Nevada. Um, and so trains are big; everything's big in Texas, um, including the bugs. Trains are big in Texas. What's going on in Texas with with just trains and Operation Lifesaver? Well, you know, like you said, um, Texans and Americans, we we really love our trains, and so we have we've had this love affair with our trains since um, Union Pacific was started by Abraham Lincoln years and years and years ago, right? So we we really love our trains, and I think um, we've romanticized them. Um, and that, like you said, has given a lot of us a false sense of security around trains um, because we they've always been a backdrop. They've always been in our backyard and they've always been a part of our lives in one way or another. Um, and Texas has miles and miles of track, but that also means that puts us in the, um, the top of some of these really terrible statistics like um, collisions. Texas is number one in train collisions for the nation. We have 173 collisions annually um that was and that number is for 2019 we've had 173 collisions followed by california at 138 so we're um all of our track miles and then we have places like houston which are which is really unique because we have a uh, industry and we have high population mm-hmm. you know we have the the port and we so that means we have trucks and that means we're going to have track as well as the really high population um, so we have places like Houston that are really unique, um, and that's just going to make it all the more possible for us to have collisions. And that's really what puts us at number one there. So that's a really scary statistic for us. You now, nationally, um, the United States of America has seen 1,723 collisions annually. Um, and these are really scary statistics, especially, um, you know, Texas is big, but California is big too. And so um, as far as counties in Texas, Harris County, where Houston is, we have 38 collisions. And then we go to Dallas County at 15, followed by Tarrant County, which is also in North Texas, had nine. And then we go down south to Bear County in San Antonio, they had eight collisions. And so um, that's just kind of the lay of the land as far as uh, collisions in Texas are concerned. Um, but yeah, we have so many track miles and that just makes us particularly uh, vulnerable to these kinds of um, these kinds of incidents. Yeah. So one of the things we like to say is, like you were saying, always expect a train. Yeah. And anytime is train time. Those are two things that we like to say at Operation Lifesaver all the time. Anytime is train time. If you see tracks, think train. Absolutely. It, a lot of people 
again, develop that false sense of security because they say, well, the train comes through here and they're talking about passenger service. Well, the train comes through here at such and such a time. And well, it's not such and such a time, so there shouldn't be a train. But folks don't understand that the freight service works differently. It's, it's not scheduled service. And train built, train leaves, train goes, and that's that. And so, yeah, and, and that's, that's where I got it from. Of course, being in, mm-hmm. in the school bus business for a lot of years, that's where I got that line from was, you know, anytime is train time, I always expect a train and uh, was from Operation Lifesaver and a lot of years of that. And I can't tell you how many keychains I still have in my drawer from <laughs> Operation Lifesaver. We still give out the keychains. <laughs> we still give out the keychains. Um, but yeah, people, they, I, I just and, and so many being new to Texas within the last two years, I, I'm sad to hear that we have we have so many collisions and of course not having been there, but just knowing railroad grade crossings and things. I'm going to say that most of these, if not all of these, were preventable by what, you know, happened with the the vehicles. It just the trains were the trains supposed to be uh, granted. Yeah. There could be extenuating circumstances, but the, that, that rail and that right of way belongs to the railroad. It doesn't belong to the person operating the vehicle. And right. I don't want to get up on my soapbox, but my goodness, that's not yours. Get off of it. It is train property. It is the property of the railroad. So um, if you are going around the gates, uh, it is illegal, it is deadly, and you're trespassing because the gates are coming down. You have the red lights flashing. That means you're not allowed to cross, mm-hmm. um, and, that, and that means you are trespassing. Not only that, you're putting your life and the life of everyone in your car in danger um, because that means a train is absolutely coming, and that's just, um, it's really, really sad to see. That's the reason that um, Texas is, you know, number one in collisions. Um, and you're, you're right, 100% of these are preventable. If you don't want to wait on the train, turn your car around and find a different route. That, that's your option. Yeah. What's what's the, I, I don't understand what the hurry is. You know, if, if you, growing up in Southern California, if you, there's traffic and leave early for school, leave early for work, what, what, is, what is your big hurry to go around that gate and I, I see people do it here as well in Texas I, because I guess it's human nature. But what is what is your your big hurry? I mean, I, I know they're going back to the school bus days and you and I talked about it off air. In 1995, there was the Fox River Grove, Illinois uh, crash with a commuter train and a school bus. And they NTSB went back and, and investigated this accident and Yes, it was driver error on the part of the school bus driver, but there were also some contributing factors to where the the way the light was timed and to get across the the whole intersection. And they have since, from what I understand, once the train gates activate, then the signal ties in with it and the traffic signal will turn green. And so that the people that are there, they don't get stuck. But I mean, I'll tell you, I'll, I'm had I been in that there and realized what was going on, I'm not going to leave my school bus on that, on that crossing. I'm, I'm moving my kids, but unfortunately there were a number of deaths and injuries because of that, but again, preventable. And those were some of the, the most hazardous areas that we had uh, in the school bus business was railroad grade crossings. And, and we taught a lot on, on those just to, to make sure that, that, that things were safe. But again, even with the, the, the traffic signals and how they were, whatever, preventable, got, got to be that train is where it's supposed to be. And one of the things we tell, um, we do presentations, we're a volunteer driven organization. We do have volunteers across the state of Texas who go out and do safety presentations. And one of the things that we tell our professional drivers is to know be very comfortable with the the length of your vehicle and know that know how much it's going to take for your vehicle to successfully complete that crossing. It's, it's something that's very, very important. And one of the numbers that we are very proud of um, is that the number of bus drivers that we um, talk to every year. So let me bring up that number real quick. Um, 
because we really like to make bus drivers and school safety a priority. Absolutely. Children are our future. And that's, to me, that's the, the school bus driver position is very important because you have the, what we used to call the world's most just cargo, other people's children that you're driving. So we did 139 presentations to school bus drivers in 2020, whenever we, um, you know, when, when COVID hit, we are a face-to-face, you know, we had volunteers going out and doing mm-hmm. presentations and then COVID hit. And of course we didn't ask anyone to do any face-to-face face presentations because we're a safety organization primarily. Um, and we still managed to do 100 and, 139 school bus driver presentations in 2020. So we really made that, we really make that a priority. Um, another priority we have is a new driver and driver education. We did 161 new driver presentations. We think it's really important for uh, new drivers before they get the keys in their hand to understand how to properly navigate a crossing. And so um, even through 2020, when, like I said, we weren't doing a whole lot of presentations, we were still finding um, as many ways as we could, as many ways as possible to get in front of new drivers and school bus drivers. I, th- I think that's great. And, and thank you guys for doing every single one of those presentations, not only to new drivers, but to school bus drivers, because that is so important. My, my daughters, my stepdaughters uh, are 16 and 17 and just learning to drive. And so, and you and I had talked off air about driving in Houston to me is way different than driving in Los Angeles. So they're, they're, (laughs) they're, they're in driving school right now because it's mom and dad are saying, Oh no, we're not going to teach them to drive here. So um, they're they're going through their driver training currently right now. And both of them could walk in here, sit down at the mic right now and tell you the dangers of that railroad crossing and how to do it because dad has sat down with them from his school bus days and said, okay, here's what you do. And well, what if the dad, what if the, the arms go up and the lights are still on? So what, is that the same as a flashing red light in an intersection? Yep. What if they honk at me? So, you know, what if they go around me? That's up to them. Don't go across the crossing. If you're directed across the Mm -hmm. crossing by railroad personnel or law enforcement, then you go across. If not, it's the same as a red signal. Anyway, I no. So they, they can tell you. And, and so it's all education. It's, it's, and I can guarantee you having not been in that seat, I'd love to be in that seat and be able to ride along one time. I know they don't even do that anymore, but my friend who drives a train, uh, he doesn't want to come around that corner and see someone sitting on the tracks, you know? So don't put yourself in that position and don't put them in that position. Just be smart. But I, education is, is absolutely it. And yes, thank you guys for, for doing that. That's, that's, that's great. Longer trains these days from what I'm told too. They're, they're building them longer. Yes, Ob- they're making obviously them longer. The, yeah. The, the railroad obviously wants to get the most bang for their buck, you know, and you know, so it, it takes longer to get that thing stopped. Absolutely. Yeah, if it, it can take a mile or more for a freight train to stop, if it's if it's going 65 miles an hour, it can take over a mile for a train to come to a complete stop and they don't have a steering wheel, they can't go anywhere else. They throw that train into emergency and just hope and pray that um, mm. that no one is injured. And that's something I think you brought up a good point a minute ago. That's something that people don't really consider is there are two train crew members. There's an engineer and a conductor in the front of that train and there's nothing they can do if if a car is going over a crossing. Um, there, there's nothing they can do to, to stop that train in time. As much as they would want to, there, there would be nothing that they could do. So um, that's something, like I said, we kind of tend to romanticize trains. And that's something that we might not always consider. Um, especially if, like I said, we have so much track in Texas. And you're used to being around trains. You're used to hearing the trains. But they absolutely do not run on a schedule. And um, you might feel comfortable because, oh, I live here and I hear the train and I'm used to being around it. And sure, you know, I do this all the time. I've done it since I started driving. And you get probably a little too comfortable, especially around the places where you live and the places you're, you work. Those are the places where you're going to get most comfortable and probably the most complacent. So um, I would just, you know, I just want everybody to know that you know, trains do not run on a schedule and 
you cannot go around the arms that is trespassing and then that property is railroad property. So I think those are some really important things to remember. I got to meet a gentleman one time in my paramedic career who was ultimately considered a trespasser. He was a patient before he was a trespasser, but he had fallen in to the, the Reno trench Reno dug a, it was a massive tax project, but what ha- used to happen in Reno was that the train came through town, all of the freight trains, all of the passenger trains. And uh, there was a, the, pa- the Amtrak came through once in the morning, once in the afternoon, it stopped, did its business and then continued on. But what it did was it blocked all of the streets downtown. And so consequently the trench was built. And so I, I don't know exactly how deep the trench is. I'm just going to say 50 feet. And what happened was one of the gentlemen, this trespasser, decided that he had had too much to drink from a local establishment. And he decided that he would climb over the fence and drop down into the trench. And he fell. And train crew was approaching, not at high speed, because there is whatever the speed limit is in the trench, but they saw something ahead and they slowed even more and they weren't sure if it was debris or something. And they slowed down very slow. It was not on the track, but it was next to the track. And they realized that it was a person and So they stopped and went through their dispatch center. We ended up getting the call. The only way to get in there was to drive into the trench. So the fire department and the 911 ambulance service that I worked for, you had to go to one end of the trench or the other end of the trench to get in there. So we drove down there and we ended up picking up this gentleman. And of course, it's always the drunk guy that never gets hurt. And it was very cool for me being a rail fan that they in order for us to get to him because he was on the different side of the train than we were they had to break the train they had to uncouple the train and move the train up so that we could get to him and we got him and got him out of there and then we got to back all the way out of the trench so uh, just another thing you know don't be stupid trains are big trains are you know all that to say that that i was impressed with the railroad crew Uh, the railroad police was there from that particular service. That's union Pacific right away. That's in there. And, um, very impressed there. The gentleman survived just fine. He had a few bumps and bruises. And if it were me, I would have been dead just from the fall, but you know, yeah, it's incredible that he survived at all. It's he, you know, (laughs) drunk people, they Gumby, you know, (laughs) it's, Ah, the stories that the paramedics can tell. That's what they say. I should write a book too, but you know, anyway, and we also used to say that you can't fix stupid, but you can sedate it. And we did that too, but that's a whole different broadcast for a whole different time. But um, trains are big and trains are fast and trains do a, 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 a great job for our country. You know, I, I, you and I know this and our friends that work in railroading know this. everything, everything travels by rail everything does yeah about 40 percent of everything in your house has been uh, transported by rail at some point yep so and it's really really important industry to, to everyone in america so you might not think it's important to you because you don't have it in your town but um yeah it, you've been affected by it and you don't even know it but you're mad because that train is doing some switch work and you had to sit at that grade crossing for a few extra minutes it's not that guy's or that gal's fault that's running the train. Give them a break. <laughs> They're getting something to your house. Believe me, they are. They are. Jessica, what can, what, what are the, the, the general bullet points that Operation Lifesaver is putting out these days that what, I mean, yes, we know don't go around the track, don't go around the gates and, 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 and the trespassing and like, but what can the motoring public do to protect themselves as well as the train crews these days? What's the latest that, that we're putting out? So we always say, always expect a train, like we were saying a minute ago, that um, trains do not run on a schedule. So if, um, and people always want to know, what what can I do? What if I get, you know, there's always these um, scenarios people come up with. What what if my train, what if my uh, car is stalled on the tracks? Um, At every single crossing in the United States of America, there's a blue and white sign 
And on that sign is a unique number for the track and a number you can call. Mm -hmm. So if you are driving a low centered vehicle and that gets hung up on the tracks, you need to get out of your car, go in the direction of the train. Um, you need to call that number on the, on the blue and white sign and let them know where you are using the number on the sign. And um, that, that'll, that number will get you to the, the railroad and they can tell that train to stop before it gets to that, before it gets to the crossing where you're stuck. So I think the blue and white ENS sign, that's what we call it, emergency notification system sign, the ENS sign, um, the blue and white sign is particularly important, especially if you um, if your car is stalled or if you're driving a truck or some other sort of low centered vehicle and you need assistance at a crossing, you can call that number and give the number to, of the crossing to the person on the line and they can stop that train before it gets to you. Um, and I'll tell you, our best partners are our railroad is our Union Pacific, our BNSF, Kansas City Southern, uh, CSX, um, CN, and all of the short lines across uh, across the nation. They are our absolute best partners, and they're also your friend if you're if you're caught if you need assistance. They they want to help you get safely across. Um, they they have absolutely don't want to hit you. So. Um, I think the blue ENS sign is some of the most important information that we can give um, and always expect a train and walking on or beside railroad tracks is illegal. I know it's pictured in movies. I know that we see it um, romanticized throughout media, but it is illegal and it is very dangerous because trains overhang the track by three feet or more on either side. Mm. So they're, they're bigger and they're faster than they look and you're going to get hurt if not, you know, at the very least, you're going to get a ticket. Um, so, yeah, that's it's illegal. It's trespassing. Um, stay off and stay away. That's that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. You can look down that track and see that train approaching, and I can guarantee you that you cannot tell the speed of that train that's approaching you. It is an optical illusion, and it can be doing 70, and it can be doing 10, and you cannot tell. So don't mess with the train. The train is always going to win. The train is really your friend. Wave at the crew. Say hi. Don't get mad. They're just doing their job. Leave early for work. Stay off the track. Don't trespass. And don't go across that crossing unless you can get all the way across, guys. All the way across. Like Jessica said, know the length of your vehicle. If you're a commercial driver, especially, or if you're a young driver, don't go, don't start, don't even start across that crossing unless you know you can get all the way across. Just don't do it. So much life-saving information could be literally life-saving information is available on the Operation Lifesaver website at oli.org. G-O-L-I.org, and that'll be in our show notes for you guys to take a look at. And Jessica, what else can we tell them? How, how can um, just refer everybody to the website or how can they get in contact with you if they're here in Texas, if they have other questions or what's, what's best for you? Okay, so if you would like to, like I was saying earlier, we are a volunteer-driven organization. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer, you can go to oli.org, and at the very top of the website, click on volunteer, and you can fill out our application there, and that'll come straight to us. Um, and then if you would like a presentation for, you say you have a group or a school or a class, or you want a presentation, or you just want some safety information, um, click on the next link there, it says request a safety presentation. Fill that out and put in your address and then that'll send an email directly to us and we'll reach out to you and see what we can do to help. Absolutely fantastic. Jessica Dvorsky with Operation Lifesaver Texas. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for taking your time. We appreciate you. We appreciate uh, Operation Lifesaver. Thanks so much for taking the time. And thank you for having me. joining us today for the Papa Jeff's America program. Check out more episodes of the Talk Radio podcast at PapaJeffUSA.com. 
You can subscribe through the link on our website or wherever you get your podcasts. We're on all the major platforms. PapaJeffUSA.com is your home for everything Papa Jeff. Anytime, any device. And while you're there, you can check out more episodes of the broadcast, check out the OG Corner, get in contact with us, and you can easily link to all of our social media. We do want to hear from you. Your thoughts, comments, and suggestions are what make this program happen. So send us an email on our website, PapaJeffUSA.com. Please help us to get the word out and share our broadcast on all of your social media because sharing is caring. And speaking of caring, if you'd like to help us coffee up here at the Talk Radio Podcast, give a click to the Buy Me a Coffee link. You know how much Papa Jeff loves his coffee. Hey guys, remember to wear a mask if you're going out. Practice that social distancing. Wash your hands frequently. Get the vaccine when it's your turn. And let's all do the right thing and take care of each other. Remember, disagree doesn't mean dislike. We're all in this together. Thanks again for joining us and bring a friend with you next time. We're looking forward to seeing you next time on the Talk Radio Podcast, continuing the conversation, one podcast at a time.